I thought I would start at the beginning. This is the most northern headwaters of the Rio Grande near Creed, Colorado. Merriam-Webster's definition of headwater is the source of a stream, usually used in plural. Going to the definition of source, you find listed a generative force, one that initiates a point of origin. As you can see from this slide, we live in the headwaters or source of the Rio Grande. Generative force, one that initiates origin, strong, powerful words. I like the note included with the definition of headwater, this usually used in plural note. As in most things important, rivers and communities they support are all about relationships. They are all about many streams coming together to make a rich and vibrant whole, like this stream that flows above Taos. Let me take you now to the headwaters of my relationship with water. This picture is of the swan boats in Boston. <laughs> I grew up on the Charles River watching ducks and swans, just as my youngest son is doing here. Water is about memory. It's about family. And it ties us to our point of origin. It's also where Make Way for Ducklings was, was, took place. Now to the beach of my childhood, head of the meadow beach on Cape Cod. I'm lucky enough to share this beach with my children every summer, where we come together with family from, our, from all over the country, cousins, grandparents, aunts and uncles, many streams flowing together to create new memories. As project director of, for Amigos Bravos, I work to protect and restore the waters of New Mexico. Our vision is of rivers so clear and clean, we can bend our knees, cup our hands, and drink without fear. <laughs> Back to the headwaters of the Rio Grande. The next several images are of the high, of our high priority wetland systems in the Carson and Santa Fe National Forests. We call them wetland jewels. Due to their critically important ecological and community role, we have identified these wetlands to not only bring attention to their importance, but to secure their long-term protection and restoration. Wetlands can be comprised of either a single wetland or a complex of several wetlands. They provide important ecological functions to the terrestrial and aquatic landscape. They provide stream flow maintenance, carbon sequestration, flood control, aquatic habitat, groundwater recharge, and essential forage for livestock and wildlife. They are the sponges of the watershed. They soak up spring runoff and then slowly release water, feeding downstream acequias throughout the growing season. They serve as nature's reservoir wars and are critical for providing ecological and community resilience in the face of climate change. Also, they are beautiful. Unfortunately, not all is well in our headwaters. We have impacts from mining. Here we go. <laughs> um, and here on the left is a picture of the open pit at the Chevron Cuesta mine. And on the right, we have stormwater picking up trash and petrochemicals from the paved surface of Taos Plaza. Stormwater that then flows through the storm drain directly into the river. We also have head cuts. Here is a picture of my colleague Shannon standing in a head cut in the Midnight Meadows Wetland Jewel. In a healthy system, this area would not have a channel and instead would be a smooth, sloped wetland. The head cut has channelized the area, creating a drain that is drying it out. There are techniques to stop head cuts and restore wetlands. Here are pictures of two of these techniques. We have a Zuni bowl on the left and a log rundown on the right. We are now actively working in several wetland jewels in the Carson to install these restoration structures. In the Midnight Meadows wetland jewel pictured here, we have two restoration weekends planned this summer. We will work to build riparian fences 
uh, to reduce impacts from wildlife, vehicles, and grazing, and install structures like the ones pictured in the last slide. We also have work planned this summer in the Lahara Wetland Jewel. We can't do this work without you. Here is a picture of volunteers from a Midnight Meadows restoration project. It takes the hands of many people to join together to be a generative force of, of restoration. It is through community that we will protect these headwaters that we all love and depend upon. It is also important that we teach our children to care for these headwaters, to care for these relationships. In her book of prose, Upstream, Mary Oliver speaks of directing children upstream. Teach the children. Give them the fields and the woods and the possibility of a world salvaged from the lords of profit. Stand them in the stream, head them upstream. Rejoice as they learn to love this green space they live in, its sticks and leaves, then the silent, beautiful blossoms. Attention is the beginning of devotion. In some ways, we don't need to teach children so much as to nurture their natural capacity for being connected to the world, to nurture their natural capacity for curiosity and for joy. Here, my children are marveling at the wonderful world of hermit crabs. Attention is the beginning of devotion. Sometimes, the joy of being connected can be found in something as simple as sitting in a bucket of muddy water in the backyard on a warm spring day. My wish is that we may all find water in which to head upstream, in which to find joy. I would like to close with more from Mary Oliver. I walked all spring day upstream, sometimes in the midst of ripples, sometimes along the shore. My heart opened and opened again. The water pushed against my effort, then its glassy permission to step ahead touched my ankles, the sense of going toward the source. Thank you.